Hello friends, my name is Sachin Chauhan and you are watching video related to the operating system. Hello friends, in this video tutorial, we are going to solve a problem based on non-preemptive priority scheduling algorithm. The name itself indicates priority, that means there is a priority given in your question plus non-preemptive, that means we cannot break the execution. So, let's start. The respective arrival times and bus times are given in your question. So, according to the arrival time, we draw a GAN chart. So, GAN chart look like this. Okay. So, GAN chart starts from 0. So, check for the time interval 0. Is there any process? Yes, there is a process and that is P1 process. So, we don't have any other choice. Though it is a low priority process, we don't have any other choice rather than this P1 process as it is coming for the time interval of 0. So, we have to schedule this P1 process. Now, the question is that up to what amount of time we have to schedule or we have to run this process P1. So, as it is a non preemptive task, the bus time is full. So, we have to complete it until its completion time. So, P1 completes at 4. So, we have to choose the next time is 4. Okay. So, now Again, check that we have completed from 0 to 4 time interval. So, find out how many processes are there which are coming in this time interval. So, check the arrival times 0, we have completed this one. So, from 1 to 4, we are having this 4 processes in your system. Okay, that means at current time 4, we are having 4 processes in your system concurrently. So, up from that, choose a process whose priority is highest. Here, it is given that the largest number having largest priority and the lowest number having lowest priority. So, uh, in between these 4, the largest number is 10. So, this means the P4 process having higher priority than remaining 3 processes. Okay. So, we are going to schedule this P4 process. As it is a non-preemptive task, we have to complete this until its execution time and that is 5 that means this become 5 plus 4 9 okay that means we have completed here p1 and p4 okay again check that as we have completed from time interval of 0 to 9 check how many processes are there in your system which has which include in between this time so here the largest arrival time is 6 and we have completed 0 to 9 that means all the processes which are remaining in your system are currently available for the scheduling. Okay, So, according to your priority you can schedule that processes directly now. So, 12 is having higher priority that means P6 process we are going to schedule the time for P6 process is 4 that means it becomes 13. So, P6 is over the next is 9 so that means P7 process and P7 process for 6 that means this becomes 19 so 7 will out of your system now 9 then 5 that is P5 process for 1 so this becomes 20 ok so 5 is completed next one is P3 as having highest priority than P2 process so the time is 3 so becomes 23 and the last one is P2 process it is goes out of your system and P2 process for 2 so this becomes 25 so it goes out of your system also ok so the, your GAN chart look like this now find out the table process priority arrival time burst times so here 7 ok so now the completion time can be calculated from this GAN chart so start from last two first completion time for p1 process find out the p1 process from right hand side to the left hand side it is at this and the completion time is 4 so here the completion time for p1 process is 4 now for the p2 process it's 25 for p3 process it's 23 for p4 process it's 9 for p5 it is 20 for p6 it is 13 and for p7 it's 19 ok now the next is turnaround time that is calculated from completion time minus arrival time. So, completion time and arrival time are given. 
so this becomes 4 4 minus 0 4 25 1 that is 24 23 2 that becomes 21 9 3 6 this becomes 16 13 minus 5 it becomes 8 and 19 minus 6 it becomes 13 okay now waiting time waiting time is calculated by turnaround time minus burst time so here turnaround time is calculated we have calculated here and the burst time is given in your question so 4 minus 4 it is 0 24 minus 2 it is 22 21 minus 3 it is 18 6 minus 5 1 16 minus 1 15 8 minus 4 4 and 13 minus 6 it becomes 7 ok ok so response time you know that first instance of process minus its arrival time so p1 first instance is 0 minus its arrival time it is 0 so 0 minus 0 becomes 0 now for p2 process p2 process yeah there is 23 23 minus its arrival time that is 1 to 23 minus 1 becomes 22 okay next one is p3 p3 has 20 and arrival time is 2 that means this becomes 18 next one is p4 p4 4 arrival time is 3 4 minus 3 1 p5 19 19 minus 4 that is 15 next one is p6 p6 at 9 9 minus 5 it becomes 4 and last one is p7 13 13 minus arrival time is 6 and that is 13 minus arrival time 6 it becomes 7 ok fine now calculate average turnaround time and average waiting time average turnaround time is calculated from this addition of this divided by total number of processes that is 7 and here the average waiting time that means this and divided by number of processes again 7 ok so here the total is 92 divided by 7 and it becomes near about 13.14 and the average waiting time the addition of this column divided by number of processes that is 7 so it becomes 6.71 fine ok thank you if you like this video please press like and subscribe button thanks for watching